Welcome everyone to episode number 72 of the Stardom Cast. I'm your host, Matt Turner. Hope everybody is doing well today. Hope everybody's keeping cool as it is a, we're in the middle of a heat wave here in the good old northeastern Pennsylvania. So hope everybody's keeping cool. Everybody's keeping hydrated. If this is your first time with us, welcome. Come on in. This is a uh, safe and positive space. Leave all your negativity and all your negative energy and anything bad going on at the door. Wipe your feet off and put your feet up and grab a uh, tall, uh, cold, frosty beverage, whether it's a Yoo-Hoo or if you're of of age, a nice uh, cold beer. That always goes down nice on a warm summer's day. So if this is your first time, great to have you along the Stardom podcast train. And uh, if you are a constant listener of the podcast, as always, I thank you and welcome back to some fun time here. This seems like it's going to be a little bit of a shorter show as as we go into next week, the uh, five-star Grand Prix, a loaded, loaded show. So we're going to have some loaded shows coming up here probably the next two months or so. So this just seems like it's uh, was a kind of a quiet week for stardom coming up the Midsummer uh, Championship of Review and or, or, yeah, Review, excuse me. Uh, that fantastic pay-per-view. So we've got a couple shows we're going to review, a couple shows we're going to preview. Really not much on the news-wise, but uh, first and foremost, on behalf of everyone here in the Stardom cast and really the wrestling world, we just want to offer our condolences to uh, Himika's father who had passed away. So just want to offer the condolences there as it's never, never, never a good thing, never an easy time. But um, yeah, just an awful, awful thing. So our prayers and thoughts go out to her and her family during this difficult time and uh, really the only other anything news that i kind of want to touch upon is i guess it's kind of a little small segment of the podcast that everybody seems to enjoy is the eo shirai watch uh, really nothing no major news coming out this week other than she was spotted supposedly at the pc just training not sure if she signed a new contract with them i know we all kind of hope not um but she is under contract with them until I believe the first week of August. So the PC is there, to, you know, for her. Obviously, she got injured sometime in the early spring. I think it was uh, late March, early April. I think right around the NXT Stand and Deliver WrestleMania show. So uh, she, maybe she's just working off some ring rust. But other than that, you know, hey, no news is good news for us Stardom fans, as I think we all want to see her back. So. Other than that, yeah, like I said, it's been a kind of a light week on news. Oh, last show was the uh, one of the longest podcasts we've done here on the Stardom Cast. I think this one might just be uh, some of the shortest. So as of this recording, there was just two shows up on Stardom World that we are going to review. The show from 714 and the show from 716. So uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so from... The 14th of July, the opener was Micah versus Lady C versus Unagi. I thought this was a good good way to open the show, good way to get the crowd going, to get the blood pumping, to get the uh, the hands clapping there. Lady C looked really good here, right out the gate. I mean, she comes right out of the gate and hits a big boot and a choke slam on Micah. Got the giant swing on Unagi, but eventually this match was kind of just really just built around Micah, kind of really priming her up for this five-star. Unagi got some good stuff in, too. Match didn't go terribly long, just eight minutes and thirteen seconds, and Micah wins with that new discus lariat that she's been uh, she she debuted just here a few weeks ago. So she got the win here. So this is nice that we have another big move from her. I mean, obviously she's won a match or two with the superplex. The Mijinoku driver is her go-to. I'm a big fan of her lariats and her and Himika the lariat sandwich. But the fact that she's added like this, uh, you know, rolling discus lariat is just another uh, weapon in her arsenal. So I thought that was really, really good and kind of, you know, put on showcase here. I expect her to win a match or two in the five star with it or to build up to the Michinoku driver. So I thought this was good. Like it's a good way to start the show. Three and a quarter stars. Next match saw the Uedo Tai team of Starlight Kid and Ruwaka take on Koguma and Saeeda representing stars. Really good uh, technical wrestling to start the match between Starlight Kid and Koguma. You know, these two have obviously history with each other going back to all of their um, their intertwined stuff with the high speed championship. So I thought that was good. Uh, really wasn't not too long into the match. Oedo Tai started using their dirty tactics to get the advantage. Uh, a lot of this match, again, built around Starlight Kid and uh, Saeeda. Like I said, Koguma got some good stuff in in the beginning. Baraka wasn't there too, too much. You know, she kind of just was there when she needed to. Uh, you know, Starlight Kid kind of put her in the right spots at the right time, you know, making sure she can shine up pretty well. But you have three or four of these people going into the five star. And that's what kind of these two shows were really built upon, just kind of building everybody up for the five star. 
Uh, Kogan will get to the back row on Ruaka. Uh, again, three and a quarter stars. Again, not too terribly long of a match. Did what it needed to do, but it's always nice seeing Starlight Kid and Kogum and mix it up in the ring. Match number three saw the Oedo Tai team of Momo Watanabe and Saki Kashima taking on Mai Sakurai and Julia, or now known as, I don't know if it's official or unofficial, Oh My Julia, which is so silly. I really, really enjoy it. And I'm really enjoying the stuff with Julia and Mai Sakurai. It just goes to show you how fantastic of a talent Julia is that she's at the top of the card of stardom. And many's picked to win the five star tournament. And she's really shown just how great she is as a tag wrestler. I mean, we've seen her obviously last year. She had that fantastic run with Sherry as part of ALK. We uh, when They brought in Tekla and Mirai. She had some really good tag matches there. Tekla goes down with an injury. You see Julia teaming up with Natsupoy a little bit more. We thought maybe that was the team we were going to be getting at the Goddess of Stardom tag tournament. Come the fall, obviously, with Natsupoy defecting and going Cosmic Angels, that's not going to happen. So she takes, you know, the basically the junior member of of uh of ddm of her team and may sakura who's been improving so much is really clicking with this team with with julia i really really enjoyed this match that they had with momo and saki um really i mean th- the match starts off a little slow a little slow building but it really picks up with the momo and julia stuff and that, that's a singles match that we never really got full on in stardom it's a match that we will see coming up here in the five stock you know in the next uh, the next few weeks so that was basically the crux of the match i thought that was really good and the, uh, I'm just going to call it Oh My Julia. If you dislike it, I apologize. But the tag stuff from Oh My Julia is really, really good. I was a big fan of they hit the double Shining Black. And that's like the uh, step up Shining Wizard that Masahiro Chono invented. It's basically, instead of going for the knee strike, you go for a Yakuza kick, which I was one of Masahiro Chono's go to moves. So they hit the sandwich double Shining Black. And then right after that, they go to the top rope and hit the double uh, double team elbow. So I thought that was really good how they hit one big double team move and then went for another, kind of just staying aggressive, just staying on your opponent. I thought that was really good. I was also a big fan of how Momo's kicks kind of disrupted the flow of the match going towards the end, how it would lead into an almost uh, Saki Kashima win with one of her roles. I thought that was good. Like That was Momo's like main point in this match was her just to show a couple minutes with Julia. Then anytime Saki got in trouble, she would just throw like a big head kick and uh, Saki would get a roll up. But, oh, we'll get so close. Eventually, uh, Julia... Gets Saki Kashima with the Ganosuke roll. Um, I'm just going to call that uh, when you know you get the back of the wrist and you get a reverse waist lock and roll them up. I saw it in 1996 by FMW's Mr. Ganosuke. I will always call it the Ganosuke roll. Nine minutes and 20 seconds, three and a half stars. This is really, really good. And it really makes me excited to see what Julia May Sakurai are going to do in the future as a tag team. And also uh, Momo Watanabe and Julia in that match we're going to see in the five star. Match number four saw the God's Eye tag team of the number one contenders for the FWC, excuse me, for FWC for the Goddess of Stardom tag team uh, championship. Mirai and Amy Sori teaming with the leader of God's Eye, the World of Stardom champion, Sherry, to take on my favorite trio in all of wrestling, Queen's Quest, the Wonder of Stardom champion, Sai Kamatani, the High Speed champion, Azumi, and the official leader of Queen's Quest, Utami Haishista. That was a mouthful just on the opener. You knew when this graphic was going up, I think everybody kind of knew what the finish was going to be. I think that everybody got the finish right, and nobody cared because this match was awesome. My favorite match uh, of the two shows. Great way to start with some great exchanges. They basically did a good job uh, pairing off with uh, Azumi and Sherry. That's, I believe, the main event of the first night of the Five Star. And then you saw some pairing off between Mirai and Sai Kamatani. Obviously, a rematch that uh, hopefully we will see somewhere in the future because their match at that uh, Flashing Champions was what I thought was one of the best matches of the year. Another Five Star classic, instant classic that Sai Kamatani, uh, you know, is bringing to the to her Wrestler of the Year, uh, you know, Wrestler of the Year performances that she's putting on. And then they switched it over to Utami and Emi Sori, you know, the two big powerhouses. So that was really good how they shined up those three combinations with Azumi and Shuri. And they tagged out to Mirai and Saya. And then they tagged out to uh, Utami and Emi Sori. I thought it was really good how they, they just built that built those those three matches up uh, right, in the, right in this, you know, in this, uh, th- this tag match. Really great triple team spots from Queen's Quest. They really do so many things really good, you know, when they hit that. The, the 3D into the drop kick or the double flapjack and the drop kick. Not only it's like what they do, but it's like where they do, how they built the move up, where they put it, making sure their opponent is the right place at the right time. So everything flows well. I mean, these three are just so fantastic individually and as a tag team and as a six person team. Uh, eventually comes down to you, Tommy and Sherry, which is, I think, that, I still think that's their biggest money match going forward. I really, really do. And the two of them just wail on each other as we've seen them do pretty for a good portion of last year, as we're going to see them do in a five star. 
and maybe somewhere down the line towards the end of the year for the World of Stardom Championship. Who knows? This match even got me more excited for the five-star. All six of these individuals came out looking really, really good. Really did a good job hyping this matchup for the five-star. Time limit draw. We know it was going there. I don't think anybody can complain. We had three mini-matches and then maybe another half-mini-match with Shiri and Yutami there as well. They kind of teased that. They teased somewhere down the line another Mirai Sai Kamatani match. You know, count me in. I will be there. Four stars. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen this match yet, please go out of your way to go see it because this was one of the better matches of the year from these, you know, quote-unquote, row two shows. Match number five, the main event of this show, saw the stars team of Mayu Iwatani, Hazuki, and Momokogo versus the new Cosmic Angels team of Tam Nakano, Mina Shirakawa, and newly christened Cosmic Angel herself, Natsupoi. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool on, on We Are Stardom how they put the clip up almost uh, instantly as uh, the Cosmic Angels were getting ready to make their entrance. And Yunagi was at ringside. She kind of pointed to the camera and they had that long eye away. And they had that long shot because it's like, okay, well, they're going to do the dance. All three of them, Tam, Mina, and Natsupoi. How's Natsupoi going to do with the Cosmic Angels dance? And to me, it seems like it took her all of about a half a minute to figure it out. And she even threw a little Natsupoi, you know, corks in there, <laughs> which I thought was really, really good. So, and this match I thought was really solid as well. Uh, Poi and Momo to start with some high-speed stuff. I thought that was uh, that was really cool. You know, Natsupoi was in the high-speed division for a long time. Momo Kogo had that show-stealing match uh, last week against Azumi for the high-speed championship. Somewhere where I would like to see Momo Kogo maybe stay, you know, as the five-star, you know, wraps up. Momo gets cut off. They get us. The Cosmic Angels get a small heat on Momo. Huzuki gets tagged in and just runs wild through all of Cosmic Angels. I thought that was really good. A really nice spot for Huzuki. Uh, some really stick exchanges with Mina. I'm a big fan. Again, I, I literally say this every week, and it can't be overstated. Mina Shirakawa, you see her putting the work in. She gets better each and every outing, especially with her strikes. I'm a big fan of a really good striker. And I thought there were some really good strike exchanges with Mina and Huzuki. I thought their stuff was really, really good. Um, the two of them eventually tag out, double tag out to Mayu and Tam. And then it's, you're kind of like, I think the focus on this match going in was how is Natsupoi going to fit in with Cosmic Angels between the dance and all the little corks and just the double teams and triple teams that Tam does a really good job spotting everybody on Cosmic Angels. And obviously she was great. She was solid here. But like once Tam and Mayu got talking at the same time, like, oh yeah, we still have this that hasn't been settled yet. And it seems like Mayu has a lot with everybody. Even Starlight Kid, they just had that one match at the five star last year. We still have yet to kind of see like the blow off there. So they, they get tagged in like, oh yeah, you know, here we go. You know, more Mayu and Tam. I thought all their stuff was really good. Um, good double teams and triple team moves from both teams, especially uh, the Cosmic Angels. I thought their stuff was really, really spot on. Really good closing moments with uh, Momo Kogo and Natsupoi. Eventually, Natsupoi gets the Ferial Gift at 16 minutes and 35 seconds. Three and three-fourth stars. My biggest complaint about this match. And if you listen to this podcast long enough, whenever there is a six- or eight-person team with Mayu Iwatani in it, Mayu Iwatani in it, the complaint will always be not enough Mayu. But I thought this was really good, and it gave him time, almost 17 minutes. We move on to the next show, which was on the 16th of July. We open with another three-way. I thought this was very interesting how they kind of did like back-to-back three-ways. But uh, Mina Shirakawa, Mei Sakurai, and Saki Kajima. Basically, Saki, as soon as the bell rings, Saki's like, ah, I'm out of here. You two, you know, you two kind of deal with it. <laughs> you know, I guess Mina being, I guess, the face. Mai being the maybe tweener and Saki being the heel. I guess that's how that's how the story, to me at least, was going in. So Saki kind of just bails out kind of like an old 90s thing that they would do in the three ways where the heel would bail, bail out. So Mina and Mai get in there, really nice form exchange to start, really good pacing. And then once the two of them kind of wear each other down, then here comes the heel, Saki, to kind of like the vulture to pick apart the bones. Uh, I thought that was really good. It was really funny. Nothing really dragged, nothing really too crazy. Match only went seven minutes and 13 seconds. Really good uh, teasing of flash uh, style finishers for all three of them. You know, Mina has that glamorous cur- collection. Mina, she was able to tease that. Saki, obviously, teasing the Kishikasai, arguably the most dangerous move in all of wrestling. May Sakurai does like that back heel crucifix trip that we've seen her actually be Koguma with. So they did a really good job, you know, teasing all, uh, not teasing, but basically hitting, you know, all three of those uh, finishes. Obviously, all three of them got broken up, so I thought that was really good psychology. Eventually, Mina hits that fantastic Insiguri that she's been working so well on, and it looks really, really good. And then like right into the implant DDT. So big fan of her committing two big moves in a row. Seven minutes, 13 seconds, three and a quarter stars. All three really worked hard, so good way to start the match. The next match saw Julia and Micah representing Donald Del Mundo taking on the team of 
Saya Ida and Lady, excuse me, Saya Kamatani and Lady C from Queen's Quest. Uh, Lady C again, right out the get go, huge Yakuza kick on Micah. Right, I mean, right out of the gate, starts hitting chops on Micah. Julia comes in to me, think, ah, oh, she's just gonna come and you know break this up because she's Julia. But Lady C turns it around and starts chopping the two of them. And I thought that was, you know, here's Lady C, something not in the five star. Micah, a former finalist of the five star and a finalist of the last year's Cinderella tournament. Julia, the odds-on favorite to win the five-star. And here we are a week before the tournament. Lady C just, well, two weeks as of uh, as of that show. Lady C just right at the get-go, just beating the crap out of both of them. And just going to show the improvement of Lady C. So I thought that was really, really good. Uh, like I said, chops galore, the Kabashi machine gun style chops. I thought that was really well done. Eventually, Julia and Micah get the advantage. Um, the tag goes, they get a little heat on Lady C. Eventually, hot tag to Saya Kamatani. And Saya comes in there. She runs rough shot. Really good stuff from both uh, her versus Julia and her versus Micah. Saya Kamatani versus Julia match is something I would definitely like to see do- somewhere down the line. And then uh, I'd love to see another rematch between Saya Kamatani and Micah because they had a you know, they had a fantastic match for the Wonder Stardom Championship just a few months ago. I got no problem with them running it back. Really great closing stretch with Julia and Lady C. Lady C, again, get it. she got a lot in this match. They did a really good job spotlighting her. Uh, Mike and Julia hit the Holy Demon Army finish, which I will always pop me again if you've listened to this podcast long enough or if you followed my wrestling career or have followed me on Twitter. My all-time favorite tag team is the Holy Demon Army of Akira Tawe and Toshiaki Kawada. So it's basically the backdrop driver choke slam, And it was really good on Lady C, the tallest member of the Stardom roster. And then uh, Julia locks in the Stealth Viper. At 10 minutes and 22 seconds, three and three-fourth stars. And I literally have circled here three times. Lady C looked really good. You kind of figure she'd take in the fall here, but they did a really good job building her up. And that just makes the tag team of Julie and Micah look even better. That's just an old-school psychology. If you know the person that's getting beat, it's not supposed to be like a squash match. The person getting beat, if we can build them up in the match and then we beat them, we just look that much better. Just shows the genius of Julie and Micah. I thought, again, fantastic. Match number three saw... The Queen Quest team of Yutami Haishista and Azumi taking on the team representing stars Momo Kogo and Mayu Iwatanani. Mayu Iwatanani. I don't know why for some reason I struggle saying her last name. <laughs> the icon of stardom. <laughs> My opinion, the second greatest women's wrestler of all time, Mayu Iwatani. There we go. <laughs> really cool double team moves from uh, from Momo and Mayu. I thought that they gel really real, well together. Again, I'm always kind of watching some of these matches just to think who is not part of a permanent tag team that may be teaming up for the, the uh, Goddess of Stardom tournament. And just a couple weeks ago, I thought it'd be great to see Saeed and Momo Kogo. They were in a couple tag matches back to back. I thought they looked really good. And now I have penciled in. I wouldn't be heartbroken if uh, Mayu and Momo Kogo. Obviously, I think we're all keeping our fingers crossed for Thunder Rock in that tournament that would be the greatest christmas present or a late early birthday present for anybody listening but uh yeah i i'll take a uh mayu and momokogo team i thought they were really good and mayu stuff in azumi i thought was fantastic i can't even remember if we've ever seen them in a singles match uh, especially for the last like year that azumi has just improved so much to be one of the best overall wrestlers in the world that's a match that i would definitely love to see somewhere down the line i believe they're on opposite blocks of the five star i I keep trying to look at the brackets, but I'm just so busy with just uh, inundated with other stuff from Stardom in a good way. But uh, I will be doing, uh, I will be recording sometime later this week or early next week, uh, my five-star long preview. Anywho, I'm going on a tangent. Yes, I would love to see more Mayu versus Zumi, please. Really solid exchange with Mayu and Yutami, kind of almost like picking up where, uh, where they were for their Red Belt Championship match just a few years ago. Mayu landing a super kick, and then basically Utami firing up and hitting a big release German suplex. That was great. Brought me flashbacks to that match that I absolutely loved. Double tag out, and uh, I thought this was smart. When they double tag back out, Azumi and Momo Kogo, usually we see when they put high speed in these tag matches, usually it starts in the beginning, but they did it here, coming off the heat, and I'm like, oh, I thought that was, that was different. Well, I don't think I've seen that before. And again, playing off their uh, Stroll stealing match from just a few weeks ago. I thought that was really cool, really good psychology to get the crowd, you know, at a really high peak there. I thought it was really good. Uh, some double team work on Momo Kogo, and then Azumi hits the double stomp, uh, gets the win for uh, Queen's Quest. Three and three fourth stars, 10 minutes, 49 seconds. So just a shade under 11 minutes. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I have right here in my notes circle three times. And Mayu and Momo for tag lag, please, for tag league, please question mark that's if we uh we don't have thunder rock in that tournament match number four the semi-main event from this show saw the cosmic angels team of nasapoi tam nakano and yunagi versus the team representing a widow tie ruaka starlight kid and 
Momo Watanabe. Small heat on Yunagi, some really good exchanges. Um, eventually gets tagged in a not point Starlight Kid. Uh, I thought that was, yeah, they pretty much almost jumped Yunagi from the heat, not not too uh, deep into the match. Eventually gets to not point Starlight Kid. We've seen them wrestle a whole bunch before. I'll never get sick of their matches. I thought that stuff was really good. And then we get some Momo versus Tam, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Some really good stiff exchanges between the two of them. Uh, really good triple team moves from Cosmic Angels. Again, they just seem that they're probably the best when it comes to like the triple team and quadruple team spots at these multi-person tag matches, the way everything gets set up and the, like the way they built to the, the, the psychology of the spot. Um, Tam has a violent shooting and then a Tiger suplex on Ruwaka. They get the win 13 minutes, 49 seconds. Everybody worked really hard here. It's not a match that I'm really just going to kind of pick everything apart. So everything was kind of just there. I thought the, the, the exchanges between Tam and Momo were the best parts of the match. So I had it at three and a half stars. Match number five saw the God's Eye team of World of Stardom Champion Shuri, uh, Amy Sori, and Mirai taking on the team of FWC, the tag champs Suzuki, Kokoma, and Saya Ida. Basically, this was kind of like a little bit of a preview we got for the tag title match coming up here at the you know this weekend between Amy Sori and Mirai versus Suzuki and Kokoma. Really good triple team work by the Stars team. I thought that was they they were a really good job inundating that. It seems like all of really the stardom teams do a really good job with the triple teams. And you don't see that a lot in wrestling, like on your normal program, like on a Raw or SmackDown or even like an AEW or an Impact or really any of the really any of the wrestling over here in the States. You know, you see some really good double team stuff, but it's very rare you see, you know, triple or quadruple team. And I think just stardom just does that so, so well and just makes everything look so cool because the degree, the, the degree of difficulty is so much higher because there's, you know, if anybody's off just a half a step, it's the domino effect. Not only that, but you have to have the person in the right spot at the right time as well. It just seems like stardom hits that like 99% of the time. They do really good stuff with that. Um, yeah, so they, they, um, they do a good job building up the stars team here with all the double and triple team moves. And then the champ gets tagged in. Sherry comes in and she don't take no crap from anybody. She just destroys everyone. Uh, just, you know, solid kicks to Saya, solid kicks to Koguma. And then Hazuki comes in. She gets the advantage back, lands some some fantastic uh, near falls, some really good stuff here, some really good uh, face washes. Some uh, she hits that really good pump kick into the you know the face wash, face wash, the boot scrape. So that was really good. They built Sherry up here to be like a juggernaut, and Hazuki comes in. She's like, "No, I'm gonna take you out." So that's uh, who knows? Maybe that's a matchup that we might get down uh, somewhere down the line. I believe they're in opposite blocks from the five star. That's probably a final. I don't think many people have uh, pegged. I wouldn't be heartbroken if we see it. I'll tell you that. I thought it was really, really good. Uh, then Mirai and Hazuki exchange, uh, which was really, that was the best parts of the match, is them kind of going back and forth and just figuring that we almost got that for our Cinderella final. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Koguma, Mirai stuff was really good, but I just think that Hazuki and Mirai, they just gelled just a little bit better. And this stuff looked really good here. Sayo Yudi gets tagged back in. She gets a ton of offense on Shiri. Shiri, again, she does a really, almost like taking a page of what Julia did just two matches prior making the opponent she knows she's going to beat look really good. I mean, they gave Sai a lot of stuff here on the champ. Eventually, Shiri comes back with her flurry of strikes, takes a big buzzsaw kick, 19 minutes, 43 seconds, three and a half stars. So overall, two really, really solid shows. I know there was another show, I believe the next day on the 17th, as of this recording, it didn't go up on Stardom World. I know Stardom World had some maintenance uh, just yesterday or maybe the day before, so maybe that's why. But I will obviously watch that show, and I will review it. Uh, I did hear that Lady C and Momo Kogo had a fantastic match, a singles match. That got some good time, so I'm excited to watch it. So, and obviously, like I said, I will be reviewing that next week. So uh, we will get into our, our two previews for the two shows this weekend. Ah, pardon me as I take a sip there. Okay. Coming up this Saturday, the 23rd of August, the first ever Stardom Showcase show. And it's like a whole bunch of gimmick matches. So it's going to be interesting considering the fact that really Stardom doesn't do gimmick matches. So at the same time, they just did two cage matches and it drew really well and it got a lot of buzz. So they might be thinking, well, hey, let's just throw some of these random gimmick matches up at the wall at like basically our third brand. They have New Blood, Stardom, Proper, and Stardom Showcase and see what happens. And I'm all for it. And considering the fact that all the performers here are fantastic, so I'm going to kind of just run these matches down and then just uh, kind of just give you who I think is going to win. We start with basically, it's almost like a Royal Rumble or a Battle Royal. Uh, not really sure of the rules, but I think what's going to happen is it's basically anybody that's not in the main six matches. 
So my theory is that Mayu is going to win. And then whoever, when she wins, I think she's going to have somebody challenge her the next night on the pay-per-view for the SWA belt. Because there was two, as of this recording, um, as of this morning, there were two more matches that were announced for the Midsummer Championship in Nagoya, and neither of them had Mayu in it. So I have a feeling that I think her match is going to get announced literally last minute. I think it's going to have to do somewhere in this uh, this Battle Royal or Royal Rumble or whatever it is. But obviously it should be interesting. Okay. We, I don't know the really the match listing, so I'm just going to kind of go what I have here. Uh, the Power Tower Rule three-way tag. Mike and Himika, one of my favorite teams of all of wrestling, versus Utami, Lady C, versus uh, Amy Sori, and Saya Ida, which I think is a kind of a weird team because you have one person in one faction, one in another, but two absolutely heavy hitters. Uh, I got to go with Mike and Himika here. I mean, they're the, they're the constant team. I don't know if this is elimination or well, if it's first fall. Uh, I don't know what power and tower rule means. Maybe it's because it's a, it's a bunch of really tall wrestlers and Saida who's short, but <laughs> might be the hardest hitter of all six of these ladies. Uh, regardless, it, sh- uh, it should be really, really good. But I think Mike and Himika is going to pick up the win. Match number two. Again, I'm kind of just going in random order here. Cosmic rules. No idea what that means, but four cosmic angels. Yunagi teaming up with uh, Saki. Saki uh, from Color is not Saki Kashima, but the newest member of the, uh, one of the newer members of Cosmic Angels, excuse me, versus Mina Shirakawa and Natsupoi. Kind of figured they were going to team up Mina and Yunagi since they're the constant team here. But hey, you know, we'll shake it up here. I don't know what Cosmic Rules mean. Uh, I know that in the graphic, they're all, they all have a beer. So I don't know if they're going to be drinking beer. Hey, more power to them just as long as they're not driving home or they call an Uber. Uh, I'm just going to say just because Natsupoi is somebody that they're really, really high on and that she just had that big turn, that any team that Natsupoi is on is going to get a win. So I'm going to say uh, the team of Mina Natsupoi gets the win. Next match, again, uh, what I have written, I quit rules. We have Shuri and Mirai representing uh, God's Eye. What, what a tag team that is, Shuri and Mirai. Jeepers, like two hard hitters. Versus uh, Fujita and Hirigawi from and i probably pronounced that name wrong and i apologize if i if i did you know i'm still having problems pronouncing mayu iwatani oh i nailed it so happy for me <laughs> uh, representing the team from prominence this should be fun hard hitting i you know i'm a big fan of submissions as you all know so this should be fun but i just do not see mariah or sherry taking an l here sherry the world of stardom champion and mariah is the cinderella tournament winner so plus again we got the five stars starting in just a week's time and the two of them are in two championship matches the next day at the pay-per-view so my money is on the god's eye team hardcore rules oh my julia the team of uh, my sakurai and julia taking on suzu suzuki and raisa uh, raisa sarah supposedly suzu suzuki i'm not supposedly but she got injured at a show last week but i was just actually on her twitter and her and julia were kind of going back and forth and Suzu said she's going to be okay, so it must have been you know, just a minor injury, something that they can work around. Hardcore rules, I don't know how hardcore it's going to get. You know, is there going to be chairs? Probably. Is it going to be brawling all over the building? Probably. Table spots? Probably. Are they going to go into thumbtacks, light tubes? That I don't know. That I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Again, you have the two members of prominence that are known for, you know, glass and light tubes and barbed wire and all that jazz so is it something that they break out here on a showcase show? I don't know. Uh, regardless, I think the Promise team gets the win here with May Sakurai eating the fall. But um, I think this is going to be really good, though, really fun. I mean, we've seen Julia really turn up the violence here in these past few uh, months between her stuff with Sherry, the stuff that she's got going on with Hazuki, and then obviously the Promise stuff as well. Falls count anywhere. Tam Nakano versus Koguma versus Izumi versus Momo Watanabe. I mean... You want to talk about a stacked match. You know, Momo, arguably the greatest white belt champion of all time, finalist in the uh, five-star last year, regarded as one of the best wrestlers in all of wrestling. Azumi having top five, top six, you know, wrestler of the year, just constantly stealing the show on those high-speed matches. Koguma, someone that I guess nobody's really kind of talking about as somebody that's going to be stealing a lot of shows at the five-star, you know, current at, current champion with uh with Suzuki won the goddess of star- stardom tag championships with Suzuki contender constantly for the high speed championship finalist of the five star and then you have Tam someone that's on an absolute tear quite possibly she might be walking away this weekend with the uh, world of stardom championship more on that in a minute 
I'm going to say if it's Falls Count anywhere, who's the most vicious and violent of all of them? I think it's going to be Momo. But I mean, flip a coin. I mean, you can see literally Koguma rolling somebody up in the middle of the aisle. I think that'd be funny. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to this one because it's I have no idea. If, I mean, the other ones I kind of have an idea who's going to win. This one, no clue, no clue. But I'm just going to say Momo. And then, for what I understand, is the main event coffin match between Starlight Kid, Sayakamatani, and the Grim Reaper. I have no idea who this Grim Reaper is. No clue. I have some people saying it's going to be Io Shirai. Like, she's under contract for another two or three weeks. So it's like, that's. I, 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 I wouldn't be upset. You know, any way we can bring her back in, I will I will take. I'm not, you know, the fact that we might be getting Io back in stardom is like, you know, hey, whatever way we do it, we do it. I'm going to say the Grim Reaper wins this one. I just. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Saya and Starlight Kid had probably the best stardom match of the year uh, last week. So, or well, two weeks ago as of this recording. So you're putting the two of them in in a gimmick match against an uh, unknown third participant. I think it's going to be really good. They're going to make the most of it. I'm just going to go on a limb saying the Grim Reaper wins. I mean, you know, what, what are you going to do? You're not going to, are you going to bury Saya? Are you going to bury I don't know. I'm just going to say the Grim Reaper wins, but who knows? I can be completely off my rocker. So... Before we move into this main portion of this match, uh, or this podcast, um, first of all, let me get another another sip here. I just want to talk and plug our Patreon. So as of right now, we do have a contest going on for the Patreon. That's for all members. The $1, $1 tier member, the $3 tier member, and the $5 tier member. So if you were thinking about joining the podcast this is like the perfect time just a dollar gets you enrolled in this contest and it's the five star grand prix contest and what you win there will only be one winner what you win is you will win a lithograph of the final four par, final four easy for me to say final four participants of this year's cinderella tournament with facsimile signatures on it i did put the picture up on twitter those aren't real signatures to let everybody know they're facsimile signatures but it's beautiful on a beautiful glossy paper you know it's mirai natsupoi uh, koguma and hazuki so what the tournament is and if you're on patreon you probably have already put your votes in is there's four different things one you have to have the blue black winner right two you have to have the red black winner right and three you have to have the overall winner right now, if you have more than one person that has all three of them, then basically we're going to go into points. So whoever has the most points, all right, so say, for example, you have Julia winning the one block. You have to have her points. You know, how many points you think she's going to have going into the final, not counting the final, going into the final. And then say that you have Sherry winning the, the other block. You would have to have her points as well. So then if we have that goes to a tiebreaker. We will have a double tiebreaker, and what that is going to be is what wrestler from either block, it's only one wrestler, will have the most points but didn't go into the final with the points. So say, for example, Julia has nine points, Momo has eight, but Momo has more points than anybody else that didn't make it to the final. You would write Momo, eight points. So that's why there's uh, you'd have to have those three right, obviously the red block winner, the blue block winner, the overall winner, and then if there's a, somebody has the same three, and, you know, we have more than one participant that has the same three, then we would go to the points. If that goes to a tiebreaker, then we go into who uh, who do you think will have the most points but doesn't make it in for a double tiebreaker. And then if there's another tiebreaker from there, I don't know, we're just going to have to figure something out. The deadline for this, I believe, is I think uh, Sean has a post July 28th, so just right before the five star. So, again, this is a great time to support the Patreon. And I can't say thank you enough to everybody that has supported the Patreon. I get messages all the time from new uh, podcast listeners, from new people of the Patreon. It's absolutely fantastic. When I first took this over about six or seven weeks ago, I was a little confident, but I was a little nervous. I wasn't really sure how I was going to be able to do this as a solo show. And basically, I just started writing things down that I wanted to do. The what people are, you know, you guys are absolutely loving the watch along for the, you know, for the Red Belt tier members. Uh, we just got done. We just posted our uh, Hanukkah Marvers Julia from uh, End of the Year Climax 2019. Fantastic buzz. Just in a little bit here, I'm going to be recording uh, another one for the watch along. And I have so many other ones that I want to do. So I can't say thank you enough. As far as uh, the White Belt tier members, the $3 and the $5 tier members, we just dropped the Utami uh, World of Stardom Championship reign. Before that was B. Priestley, her reign, and uh, the Mayu Iwatani world of stardom championship reign so they're all there you can go back and listen to the, the, the past ones that me and rob did as well and then uh, at the end of the month uh risha hoshinki wonder of stardom championship run will be in your podcast feed so again i thank everybody all the new listeners 
all the new Patreons, I can't say thank you enough for the support. It really means the world to us. And I, I get messages from listeners all over the country. It just absolutely blow, blows my mind just how far that not only this podcast is reaching, but just stardom in general. Just shows you how much the promotion is growing, as I truly believe it is the best wrestling in the world. And I watch a lot of wrestling. Okay, the main event of this show, the Midsummer Champions in Nagoya, which will be Sunday morning. Now, before I forget, because I will forget, I usually, when it comes to these pay-per-views or these big shows, I usually get up early and watch them live, just so I can interact with all the fantastic folks on Twitter and just kind of get everybody's opinion. There is a very good possibility that I will have my Twitter off for about 24 hours, as I will be away at a catch wrestling camp. Um, there is a possibility I might be getting up watching the show and literally on next to no sleep driving like an hour and a half to new jersey so i can get stretched out for seven eight hours because that's the type of maniac that i am so we shall see so if i don't reply to anybody on twitter or if i'm you don't hear from me on twitter until like the next day don't think i'm ignoring you um because obviously i don't do that i love you know interacting with all the listeners and all the fans of stardom and just everybody in general so please don't think that i'm ignoring you it's just that i don't want to be spoiled especially with that main event it's so kind of up in the air right a week before the five stars so just want to let everybody know if you don't see me on twitter for you know 24 hours after the uh, the show that is why okay two matches uh like i said just this morning were just announced uh suzu suzuki versus saida and again if they just announced suzu suzuki that just this morning on the show, she's probably cleared to wrestle. She's probably going to be okay. So that will be an absolute banger of a match. But I fully expect Suzu Suzuki to uh, to come out with the win. That's going to be a fantastic match. Also, another match that was announced was it's a uh, basically three versus three versus three. We have the Prominence Tag Team led by Risa Sarah versus the Cosmic Angels team of Mina Shirakawa, Nagi Natsupoi versus the Queen's Quest team of Miyu Yamasaki, Yutami, and Lady C. Again, any team with not support on it, just coming off the buzz of the Midsummer Champions uh, show, uh, two, you know, pay-per-view two weeks ago, is going to pick up the win. I fully expect not support's team, the, co- the new Cosmic Angels team, to get the win there. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of just going kind of the order I have written down because I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I know what the main event and co-main event is going to be. So next would be the, this is a tough one. This is a tough one to pick. Goddess of Stardom Championship match. Mariah and Amy Sori challenging FWC, Hazuki and Koguma. They had a really, really solid 15-minute draw match just a few weeks ago that kind of just built towards this match. Really not sure where they're going to go on this one. I would not be shocked to see Mariah and Amy Sori take the tag belts. Just because it seems like the Goss of Stardom Championship over the last few years, uh, with the exception of Julia and Shiri, and a lot of that had to do with because Julia was injured, but uh, it seems like that, that tag title is a lot of hot potato. Really a lot of hot potato. So I wouldn't be shocked to see new champions here, but I'm going to go with my gut and say Hazuki and Koguma retain. Next match. This is a match I'm really intrigued with. It seems like these artists of Stardom Championship matches are just absolute bangers and like potential show series. It's kind of like almost an afterthought to like you look at the match like, oh yeah, that's going to be good. Don Zomundo team of Julia, Mike, and Himika challenging Oedo Tai's Starlight Kid, Saki Kashima, Momo Watanabe. Based on star power, you have to look at the Don Zomundo team might kind of have the advantage here. But I just don't, I think with Julia, Mike, and Himika possibly having a pretty deep run in the five star I just don't see them winning the artist belts here. I see Saki Kashima hitting the Kishikasai on uh, Himiko or Micah, getting her a really big win. And that would be smart because you look at all these. You have, you know, again, Julia's the odds on favorite to win the tournament. They're doing a really good job starting to push, push uh, Himika. Micah, I think, is going to be really, really close getting towards those last two or three days. I think she's going to be really close to making it to the final. Momo and Starlight Kid, they're coming off two fantastic challenges for the red belt and the white belt. I see them making a deep run. So it's kind of like Saki Kashim is kind of like the afterthought here. It's like, yeah, she might get one or two wins here with the Kishikazai. So I think getting her a win here on pay-per-view a week before the tournament starts against these three fantastic wrestlers from Donald Del Mundo, I think that put a lot of steam on her going up into the five-star. And you can do something cheap. Like Momo hits the loaded boot on Mike or him again, then she gets hit with the, and then, you know, Saki gets the Kishikasai. You can do something like that. I think that's probably the route that they're going to go, and I think it's smart. This way you get a little more steam on Saki going into the five star. High speed championship match, Rina and Azumi. We saw this set up at the last pay per view after Azumi was exhausted from her show stealing match with Momo Kogo. She's kind of just laying there trying to catch her breath, and Rina comes off with the double knees. 
I think this is going to be fantastic. I also think this is one of the more easier matches to predict, although I can be wrong. But I do see Azumi retaining, and I do see Azumi giving, much like she's given to uh, Momo Kogo and a lot of the other high-speed wrestlers, her best match ever. I think this is going to be a really good way to showcase Rina, and I think Azumi will be doing a really good job you know, making Rina look better than she already is. And this may continue the streak of Izumi just having show ceiling matches at this uh, big show. I fully expect this one to be an absolute banger, but I see Izumi getting the win here. Kona main event. Again, I don't know how these are going to be listed, but I'm assuming this will be the co-main event. Wonder of Stardom champion, Saki, all capital, capital letters. So we might say, Saki! It's maybe a little bit of a yelling. Representing C- Colors and Cosmic Angels, challenging one of the best wrestlers of the year, Wonder of Stardom champion, Sai Kamatani. Fully expect Saya to have to get the victory here and retain. Again, crazier things in wrestling have happened. And just like Azumi, I think this is one where she's going to take a wrestler that's you know pretty good, really good, and have one of their best matches. I fully expect Rina and Saki to have two of the best matches of their careers coming out of uh, coming out of this pay per view. And then if Saki has a really good showing here. It's be basically just again kind of what I think will happen to the other Saki. Saki Kashima. It's just going to build her up more going in for the five star, but I fully expect Sai Kamatani to retain here. Main event, Wonder of Stardom Champion, Shuri defending versus Tam Nakano. When they announced this match, I was like, I kind of thought, they announced the brackets first for the five star. I think a lot of people pegged Tam to win or have Tim and Julie in the finals, which obviously still could happen. But you have them wrestling here, and they're in the same brackets in the five star, so they're going to be wrestling each other again you know, in the next month or so. Again, I'm not slated. I'm not sure when they're slated. I'll have everything kind of written down in a little better format for when I do my, you know, grand finale five-star preview uh, show. But I kind of thought, okay, well, Shiri's going to, Shiri will win here. Kind of wishing that this match wasn't happening here. So this way we get a little more mystery because is Tam going to lose here and then win the five-star and then wrestle Shiri again? I mean, it could happen. They're really big on Tam. She's a huge draw. She does fantastic business for you know on the multimedia platforms for stardom and sherry is the champion in their most profitable year so can they run it back again sure you know i'm not the type of person that gets fatigued with something not at all i can have a steak on monday and a steak on tuesday and a steak on thursday <laughs> if it's good steak i'm not going to complain if it's good wrestling keep giving it to me again you guys hear me wax poetically my favorite feuds of all time in wrestling are okada tanahashi flair steamboat masawa kawada masawa kabashi those matches happened a zillion times, never got tired of them because they were all really good. So I just thought when this match got announced, okay, Shuri's going to win the champ. Shuri's going to uh, retain here. No way Tam's going to win. And then the more I think about it, the more people are messaging me on Twitter. And I talked about this a few weeks ago. Is what is the biggest match coming out of the five star? Is it going to be Shuri versus Julia? Is it going to be if Tam wins the belt, Tam versus Julia? Because that's kind of like the bigger story. They had that giant feud at the beginning of last year for the Wonder of Stardom Championship that culminated in uh, Budokan Hall in the brutal, brutal, fantastic match for the Wonder of Stardom Championship, hair versus hair. And then you see them still going at it when they have these, you know, they're repeatedly done. They're done a lot. I know a lot of people are complaining about it on these, you know, quote unquote, road to shows where they're doing Donald Dumondo versus Cosmic Angels where the two of them are always getting really chippy with each other. So it's like, okay, you know that's still there. Then you throw in Julia stealing May Sakurai away from Tam, and now you throw in Tam stealing Tam away from, uh, Tam stealing, excuse me, not support, away from Donald Del Mundo. So you throw those two factors in, and you're like, boy, howdy, you know, where, where are we going here? So that's a possibility. I think it's a real possibility that Tam might walk away with the championship here. I think it's more, I think it's a harder pick than it was for the Momo Shiri match. Do I think it's going to happen? No. I think Shiri's going to retain here. But I wouldn't be shocked if Tam wins here or if this goes to a time limit draw or some sort of weird finish that keeps Tam in really good contention going into the five star. So, uh, going to be interesting to see. Going to be interesting to see. But regardless, I think the match is going to be great. I mean, Tam is, she's, she's been improving so much the last 18 months. She's really solidified herself as a main eventer in the last year. She's going up against literally the final boss, you know, Shiri, just dominating the competition. And I'm excited to see the strike exchanges between Shiri and uh, and Tam. Really excited to see how this one plays out. Again, I think Shiri's going to retain. 
I wouldn't be shocked at all if we see a new champion here. I really, really wouldn't. I think between this match and the tag match are the two hardest ones for me to call. But there are my predictions, and that is the show for this week. Uh, thank you all for listening. I thank all the new listeners for stepping aboard. I appreciate all uh, the comments I get, You know, whether it be Instagram or Twitter. I get so many of them, and I try to respond to them uh, as quickly as I can. I really appreciate all the kind words that you say. Obviously, the biggest thanks to my man, Sean, editor-in-chief, of the uh, of the stardom cast couldn't do it without him uh thank you as always sean as you knock it out of the park and getting these episodes up in a timely manner again the patreon support i can't say thank you enough for that truly truly uh i appreciate the fact that everybody's enjoying all the content that we're putting up and it's it's a lot coming you know fast and furious i have a lot of ideas for this podcast and it doesn't seem like anybody's complaining so you know they're there ready to go when you are and uh, as always if you want to get a hold of me any suggestions comments anything that i can do for you Please hit me up on Twitter and or the Instagram, Matt Turner OF. And if you want to hit up the Stardom cast on Twitter as well, you can as I check that from time to time. But the best way to get a hold of me is on Instagram or Twitter, Matt Turner OF. So that's it. Signing off for this episode. I hope everybody enjoys the uh, the two shows uh, this weekend. And we will be back next week with a few episodes as well. So remember, everyone, we're all in this together. And everybody's different. Everybody's special. Love you all. Have a great day.